Hi, thank you for joining us today for our Cutting the Cable Cord class with the Elmhurst Public Library. Today's class, we're going to cover what is streaming, subscription or pay-as-you-go content, also live TV and sports streaming, on-demand streaming, devices that allow streaming to TVs, antennas, and what you can get with your library card. Now you might be curious, can I really get everything I have with cable? And it's not really a simple answer, but the general consensus is, well, sort of. You can't get everything necessarily that you currently get with your cable subscription, but there are so many options out there that you can cater it towards your likes and preferences. Let's begin by discussing antennas. If you have a newer television made most likely from 2007 or newer, it's most likely going to come with a built-in digital tuner, which means all you'll need is an antenna and you can hook that up and begin receiving over-the-air television. Now a great resource to tell what over-the-air channels are available in your area, head over to tvfool.com. That will show you a map and allow you to enter your zip code so you can see on a map the strength of the signals being broadcast in your area. So you'll be able to tell how many miles of range that you can receive in your area and that'll help you determine what strength of antenna you might need or whether you're deciding on an indoor antenna or an outdoor antenna. Now an indoor antenna should pick up most channels that have a strong signal in your area, but outdoor antennas usually always produce better results. Face them towards the TV transmitting tower near a window, attic, or roof are some favorable locations if you can get them there. Here's an example of tvfool.com. You'll notice that all of the green indicated channels mean that a regular set-top box antenna should be sufficient to pick up those channels. But you'll notice as you get outside the green zone and begin working your way to the yellow and the pink or red areas, those are going to need a stronger outdoor antenna or maybe even a roof-mounted antenna to be able to pick up the signal. But if you're just looking to pass the time and watch reruns or live television on ABC or NBC or MeTV and watch some old reruns of TV shows on some of those subchannels that they have, you might be entertained just by an antenna alone. You'll be surprised at what's available with that on your TV. So that's how you can begin picking up channels on your TV. Um, but when we're talking about streaming a video, what is that exactly? Well, video that is streaming is played immediately after the data is received, which means it's not stored permanently on your device. So if you can think of it like watching a YouTube video, that's streaming a video. You're only downloading the content from the internet as it plays. For streaming video, you will need access to the internet. So you will need an internet plan in order to stream videos within your home. So AT&T and Comcast are just a couple of examples, but look at what is available in your area. You'll see most likely that plans hover around um, anywhere between $30 to $70 a month, depending on the speed and bandwidth that you need for your personal home setup. Streaming video has gained a lot of popularity in households in the USA. You'll see Netflix alone has over 69.9 million subscribers in the USA and Canada combined. 69% of households are already streaming TV in some form, which is incredible. So some reasons why people are streaming, it's cost cutting, if you don't need to have it all. Of course, there's a lot of paid subscriptions out there now where if you bought everything, it would be much more expensive than cable. But access to movies, backlogs of TV series, exclusive content, if you can think of Netflix exclusives like The Crown, or Hamilton's release on Disney Plus only. Other reasons include flexibility and mobility, meaning that it's on-demand content so you can choose what you want to watch at any given time. Mobility, meaning that you can watch it on your phone, and convenience. I may own all the DVDs to the office, 
But if I have Netflix and it's on there, it's much easier to select a season and an episode with my remote than it is to get up off my butt and grab the DVD and put it in the DVD player. So you might be viewing this wondering if ditching cable is right for you. So you might need to consider some things before actually getting rid of cable completely. I'd recommend making a list of shows that you need to watch. None of us need to watch anything, but what you want to watch and what you enjoy watching and figure out what streaming service that is available on. If you're going to ditch cable and you're used to watching it there, make sure that you can find it on an application or a streaming service. If you're not sure what streaming service your favorite show is currently streaming on, there is a great tool for that, a website called justwatch.com slash us. And I will cover that later in this video. So along with the internet, what else do you need? You first need the content. So that would be a subscription to a streaming service. Another thing that you'll need is a device that can play back that application or streaming service. It could be anything from a Roku, like it's displayed on the screen, or it could be an Apple TV, or it could be a smart TV or a Blu-ray player, and we'll cover that later in this class as well. So let's begin with on-demand content. These are service providers that offer on-demand content, meaning that you can select a title, a movie, an episode of a television series, and play it when you want it. You don't have to wait for a specific time for it to air. It's available whenever you decide to hit play. One of the newer streaming services that has become available is Disney+. Plus. This is available for $6.99 a month, or you can bundle it along with Hulu and ESPN Plus for $12.99 a month. Just be aware that Hulu within that bundle does not have the ad-free version, meaning that you will have to view ads with that Hulu subscription within that bundle. So what do you get with the Disney Plus subscription? Well, you'll get most of Disney's movies and old TV series, along with Marvel and Pixar movies. Uh, you get Na National Geographic and, of course, Star Wars. When you bundle it with ESPN Plus, uh, you will get also live sports and their backlog of the 30 for 30 documentaries and more. Although ESPN Plus does give you access to some great content and exclusive content like Peyton's Places with Peyton Manning, uh, just keep in mind that it's not going to be the broadcast of ESPN or ESPN2's live sports, but some college sports and soccer matches will be broadcast live. So, Hulu Plus. This is available for as little as $5.99 a month with advertisements. So what are some of the things that you get with Hulu Plus? Well, you'll get current episodes of TV shows. Not as they air, but usually a day or so later, they will be available on Hulu Plus. You'll get past seasons for most shows. Um, you'll get, uh, of course, some commercials if you go with that $5.99 a month. But you could upgrade to the $11.99 a month and go ad-free if the ads really bother you. Hulu does have original programming, meaning that it's programming that is exclusive to their platform only. So award-winning shows like Rami, you can only get available on Hulu. And you'll see that just like Hamilton on Disney+, Plus, or shows on Netflix like Ozark, are exclusive to those platforms, and they are the only place that you can currently stream and watch those titles. Let's talk about Netflix. One of the most popular streaming platforms that's been available longer than most others. Uh, so Netflix is available for $8.99 a month, but at that cheaper price, you can only stream from one device at a time and its standard definition video only, which means that you won't get those crisp, clear, high definition quality videos that you might already be used to. So when you upgrade to the $12.99 a month, you'll get up to two streams at once and it'll be HD where it's available if your internet can handle that and the title has HD quality available. So what does Netflix have? Well, it used to have the DVD service 
that you might remember when Netflix first started, they still have that, but streaming is really the way of the world right now. So Netflix has a lot of TV show back episodes where you can start from season one through 10. Uh, you, it also has a lot of exclusive original series and stand-up specials. It does have frequent catalog changes due to licensing, but that is really applicable across all of these streaming platforms. So they have to deal with licensing, which means that those could run out, and from month to month you might see that some titles disappear and new titles are available. Another big player in the streaming world is Amazon Prime Instant Video. This is available if you're already an Amazon Prime member. This is included in that subscription. Uh, if you are not already an Amazon Prime member, you can sign up for the video service for $8.99 a month, or you can choose to pay the $12.99 a month or $119 per year to upgrade to that Amazon Prime membership and get more benefits than just the video. So Amazon has a lot of original content, uh, things like Jack Ryan or The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. They also have um, TV seasons, but it's usually not available until the DVD is released. Um, and it also has a way where you can pay for videos now. So if it's a newer video that's not currently streaming, you can purchase episodes or movies to view right now. So now that we've covered some of the big players in the on-demand streaming market, how about the live TV streaming services? Live TV streaming services give you the ability to view live TV as it airs. So this is useful for sports especially, but also news programs and if you just want to watch the latest episode of your favorite TV show as it airs with everybody else so you can talk about it on Twitter in real time. YouTube TV is a paid subscription service that offers live television programming. To find out which channels you'll see on YouTube TV, visit their website. Like many other paid subscription services, they will list the live channels that you'll receive. YouTube TV will give you six accounts per household, allow you three simultaneous streams, and unlike most cable subscriptions, there's no annual contract, meaning that you just pay month to month and you can cancel at any time. YouTube TV is compatible with most devices and web browsers, so you can use a smartphone or a PC to view. And if you have a smart device connected to your TV, you'll also be able to view it on a TV as well. You do get a cloud DVR with no storage limits, so you can record as many shows as you'd like. Another popular live TV streaming service is Sling TV. Sling TV ranges from $30 to $60 per month, depending on which TV channel package you would like to receive. To find out which channels are included in the package, visit their website, where they list all of the channels that they have to offer. With Sling TV, you'll be able to watch shows as they're released. You'll also get cloud DVR for some shows, or pay $5 extra for 50 hours of storage. There is no annual contract, so you pay month to month, and it works through the Sling TV app, so that's compatible with most devices, and you can customize the channel packages that you like to receive, depending on which channels you enjoy watching. A popular streaming service already is Hulu, but Hulu Plus with live TV is a little bit different because you do get the on-demand things that Hulu provides, but also you get your live TV channels for $54.99 per month. There is no ad-free option because while watching live TV, you still have to sit through those advertisements. Unless, of course, you take advantage of their 50 hours of DVR space, which would allow you to record your shows, then fast forward through any commercials during that time. Be aware that with this plan, it is the ad-supported Hulu On Demand, meaning that all the programs that Hulu offers On Demand will have advertisements played throughout. You can just get the live TV bundle for $53.99 per month. It's normally $5.99 a month just for their on-demand content with ads. One more paid streaming subscription service with live TV is AT&T TV Now. 
This ranges from $55 to $80 per month. When shopping around for a streaming service, take advantage of any free trials that they offer. You can always cancel within that time frame. If they give you a seven day free trial, that means that you can create an account and use it for those seven days with no cost. You just have to usually add a credit card up front because after that seven day trial period is over, it will automatically enroll you in that full price subscription package. So during that trial period, if you decide that that streaming service is not for you, just remember to cancel so your credit card is not charged anything. But the trial period allows you to test out the waters, meaning that if you have a smart TV or a smart device connected to your TV, you can see if that streaming service is even compatible with one of your devices. Because if you plan on watching the streaming service on your TV and you find out that it's incompatible with that streaming service's application, it won't work for you. So before you buy anything, it's always nice to test it out before committing to paying any money for something that might not even be of use to you. Personally, I watch a lot of sports. So that's one main reason why you would want to take advantage of a free trial. Because if you're going to be leaving your cable subscription, you'll want to make sure that you still see things like live Cubs games or Blackhawks games that you rely on um, with cable. So before you commit to purchasing, just make sure that you're getting what you want. So we've covered many of the paid subscription options for on-demand and live TV streaming services. But if you have a smart TV or a smart device connected to your TV, you also most likely have access to free applications that offer you programming. Some of those include Tubi and Crackle. Crackle is actually how Jerry Seinfeld got his Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee started. He offered it through Sony's Crackle streaming platform, and it was completely free to watch. You didn't have to subscribe or even create an account. You can just begin watching their programming. Many of the free programming, the way they're paid for is they do run advertisements. So just keep that in mind. If you want to stay away from advertisements, most of the free applications, there's really no way around that because that's how they earn their money. And like anything else, um, most of that comes down to money. So you really want to catch up on a TV series or maybe see a movie that you are interested in viewing. How do you find out where that's available? Well, that's where this website, justwatch.com slash US comes in handy. It is a searching tool where you can input a title of a television show or a movie, and it will show you all of the applications that offer that movie on their streaming service. Here's an example of the website. Once you go to the website, you can search. I'm going to search for a show that I really enjoy, Seinfeld. Where is that available? Well, it looks like it's streaming all nine seasons on Hulu. So if I'm a Hulu subscriber, that's one way I can watch every episode of Seinfeld. Another movie that I just watched for the first time recently is Die Hard. That's available through HBO's new streaming platform, HBO Max, as well as their cable package for HBO. And another popular show these days is What We Do in the Shadows. The TV series you'll see is on Hulu, but the original movie is actually streaming through services that the library offers, Hoopla and Canopy. So if you want to get caught up on that, those streaming services are already available to you as an Elmhurst library card holder. We've talked a lot about streaming services, but how do you get those streaming services to your television? Well, there are many options of devices out there for you. Some of you watching this may have a brand new smart TV that has all of the applications that you need. So you might not necessarily need a device connected to your TV to take advantage of those streaming services. But these devices offer you a little bit more flexibility, especially when applications update. Usually smart televisions software can't keep up. Over time, it might be likely that your television can no longer support some applications. That's where the smart devices can come in handy. 
universal across smart devices, they connect to your TV through an HDMI port. So you will need to make sure that you have an HDMI port on your television. Most new TVs will have this connection, but if your TV is older, you may not have an HDMI port. But all smart devices input sound and video to your television through HDMI. The first smart device we'll cover is the Apple TV. If you are an Apple user, maybe you own an iPhone or a MacBook or an iMac, this device is created by Apple. The Apple TV allows you to install applications on your device and it will connect to your TV. If you do own Apple devices, it also allows you to airplay and mirror your smart phone or computer to your television. The Apple TV is a little pricey compared to most other smart devices. This has a starting range of $149 and can go up to $179 if you want the option for 4K. So just keep that in mind when you're shopping around. If you're an Apple user and you plan on taking advantage of those screen mirroring options, this could be the device for you. Chromecast is a, another very popular streaming device. This device connects to your TV in the same way with an HDMI port. It is fairly cheap. The price point is about $30 or $35 uh, for a Chromecast. The thing with this device though is it will not work on its own. You will need a smartphone, a tablet, or a computer to actually control the device. So this device does not have any applications necessarily built into it where you can download and add them. You will need those applications on your smartphone, tablet, or computer, and you are simply mirroring the content from that device to the Chromecast that is connected to your television. Roku is a streaming device that you can purchase in box or even stick form. Each one will connect to your television through an HDMI port. These devices often come with a remote that you can control. You can add applications to the device, so all you'll need is a Roku. You won't need a smart device, although they do have a Roku application that allows you to control your Roku through that app on your smartphone. But if you like the flexibility of using a remote, uh, Roku is a great device for that and you can add applications, move them around, and customize the way your home screen looks. You can't necessarily mirror your device's screen to the Roku, but as a standalone device to give you access to all the content you need, it is a great option. Roku has been on the market for a very long time, and they tend to be the leaders in these smart devices. So if you're looking and purchasing something, I really do recommend Roku uh, if you are not a very heavy Apple user taking advantage of Apple TV, or you like that flexibility of having a remote to control the device, it is a great option. Amazon's Fire TV is another very popular streaming device. A lot of us make purchases off of Amazon and even subscribe through their Prime membership. So you can access Prime TV through this device along with all of the other popular applications such as Netflix and Hulu and other paid subscription services, you can install those applications to the Fire TV device and get started watching with that as well. It is an affordable option starting around $30 and going up to $70 for a more powerful device that might be capable of streaming 4K content, um, but that is a good option for you as well. Other devices that you might already have access to include your smart TV or even digital Blu-ray players and gaming consoles. So check devices that you may have. Maybe you have an Xbox or a PlayStation connected to your television. Just start looking for applications. You'll see that they most likely already have access for you to things like Netflix and Amazon Prime. You just need a subscription for those services, but those smart devices at least give you access to where you can view the content onto your TV. Keep in mind things like Blu-ray players are just like smart TVs, where the software might not update that often, and if you have a Blu-ray player from five years ago, you might find that it is no longer compatible with newer applications like Disney Plus or Apple TV, and it most likely never will be. 
Some other streaming services I didn't really cover in depth for this class, but you have access to with your library card include Hoopla and Canopy and the Digital Library of Illinois. All of those are collections of video content that you get with your library card. So you get a number of borrows per month and you can stream those videos at no additional cost. For more information and to get help with getting started, visit our webpage elmlib.org slash evideo. So, in summary, is leaving cable really right for you? You have a lot of options these days with streaming services, but with new services being launched almost every month, it seems, NBC coming out with Peacock, their own streaming platform, which is bound to have The Office exclusively in the coming years, it's a tougher decision now with so many options. But just pay attention to how much you're paying um, and if you really need everything. Maybe a certain service provider offers you the channels that you enjoy watching. Another thing to pay attention to as you're shopping around is your internet speed. So if you own a nice 4K television, you will need a internet plan that will support the amount of data that you're going to be streaming. So you can actually get that nice crystal clear picture without any buffering. And also keep in mind how large the household is. How many simultaneous users are you going to have streaming videos to their devices? Because you will need the proper amount of bandwidth. And that will all need to be considered when you are shopping around for your internet plan. Well, that just about covers it. I know we will have a follow-up with Zoom, so if you have any questions, hopefully I can answer them then. But in the meantime, if you have other questions, feel free to contact us at the Second Floor Information Desk by calling the number on the screen or emailing us, or you can always chat us with the link found on our website. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you all very soon. Thank you.